RC with Adam is brought to you in part by these super awesome people. Okay, so this frame comes uh, pre-assembled like this, but we do want to make sure that all of the screws are nice and snug. We don't want to strip them out, obviously, but we do want to make sure they're all nice and tight, at least the ones on the bottom, because we will be ta uh -oh. we will be taking off. Felt like I stripped it there for a second, but it might have just slipped. We'll be taking off the top plate right here, and so we can go ahead and do that. Very cool. And you can see these little carbon fiber plates for the camera just pop right off as well. They're just kind of keyed in place there. So we'll set that aside. The next thing we want to do is get our motors, and I'm going to put these in place here. We'll get some stickers, ooh boy. And then um, you'll notice that these ones, for some reason they come with, they come with two baggies and each baggie has uh, five screws and the screws are basically identical. Maybe one set is like 0.4 millimeters taller, but I think that's just a manufacturing variation. So I'm not sure what's up with that, but we get extra screws. So that's nice. These are two millimeter screws. And so we're going to need a uh, 1.5 millimeter uh, drive head to screw in these screws. Now all of these motors are identical, so it doesn't really matter where we put them, but we do want to put them such that the motor wires are pointing back towards the quadcopter. I guess that's kind of obvious. Go. And I'm not going to tighten them down all the way until I get all the screws in. That's just generally a good practice. Now, just a little tip for when you're putting in screws, really any kind of screws, to make sure that you're not cross-threading it, you can rotate the screw in the opposite direction, like to back it out, until you kind of hear it fall into place or hear it click. There we go, right there. It just kind of fell into place. I could feel it and I could kind of hear it and then you can thread it in and be sure that it's not going to uh, be cross-threading and get the threads all messed up. So that's, a, that's an important thing to know. All right, there we go, last one. Now these, these screw heads do seem pretty soft. Um, so yeah, be careful with tightening them down. And I think I am also not going to be putting uh, Loctite on the threads because because these uh, screw heads are so soft, if I put Loctite on there and then I really crank it down trying to get it off and then I strip out the head, well, that's gonna be a really big pain to try and fix. So I'm just gonna leave it without the Loctite and we will uh, check on them later to see how they're doing. Okay, there we go. We have all four motors in place and now let's uh, move on to installing our, uh, all, in this case, all-in-one flight controller board. So what I'm using is this adapter that I have designed and 3D printed, and man, this thing printed super well. A tiny, tiny bit of fuzziness on just one of these posts, but these are actually quite strong, and I'm using uh, 3D Fuel's uh, Pro PLA, which I love that stuff. That's like all I ever use anymore. Fantastic stuff. And also super important to have a nice dry filament if you're going to print something like this because it's going to have a lot of stringing otherwise if it's not dry and it also will be uh it will break easily but these are quite strong so the way that i have designed this again you can get those files checked down below for a link uh to if you want to print your own you can uh put this on a 30 by 30 20 by 20 or 16 by 16 uh sized holes and so the kit here, the, the frame kit for the Cloud 149 does actually come with some additional uh, M2 screws. So two millimeter diameter and about, I think like six millimeter in length. So we could use those, but I'm going to actually use some spare M3 by six millimeter screws that I have laying around because I, I kind of like it better that it would hold it down on the ends of the adapter. So let's, uh, let's do that right now. So I will put one of these M3 screws in here and I will press press down on 
our 3D printed adapter mount and I'm going to leave it kind of loose until I get all of them in place so that it will center up nicely. So now that we have our adapter on here and you can see these little, these little pegs sticking up right there we are going to get our flight controller board that has, if it, if it doesn't already have it on there, go ahead and put on these little grippy, uh, grippy little uh, sort of standoffs, vibration dampers. And we're just going to squish that in there. And I'm going to put it so that the, the tall side is on the downward side of the board. And there's this little arrow on the board indicating which direction is forward. So it's designed to be mounted like this in this diagonal sort of way, uh, but I don't want to do that. I want to mount it off to the side, so I'm going to actually rotate it 45 degrees like so, so that way the, uh, the vibration dampers will line up with these pegs, and uh, so we're going to have to change that in beta flight later, and then we just kind of squish this on here like that. There we go. It's a better shot. Cool. So we'll just kind of squish this on here smoosh it down. It's probably best to press right on the little vibration dampers to smoosh them onto the 3D printed pegs. And these are printed just right so that there is a lot of friction holding this board in place. So like you could, you know, you can pull it right off, but it will take a lot of kind of a lot of force to pull it right off and you really want to when you do need to pull it off, you want to pull it off kind of evenly uh, because if you try and pull too much on one side, you, you could possibly snap one of the pegs there. But in any case, this is how it is mounted, and I think it looks pretty darn fine. Let's get that focus right there. Yeah. Look at that. Next, this uh, these other parts come with the, the flight controller all in one board. And so what we're going to need for this are the two leads. I'm going to solder these on there and the XT60 battery connector. And they, it comes with some heat shrink. So that'll go on the XT60 side. And then we do have some like plugs like for pins and stuff, but I'm not going to be using those. I'll just be, I'll just be direct soldering everything. Okay, let's solder up our battery connector here. So first we'll get the uh, XT60 side, side of things. I'm gonna use my super high-tech soldering equipment here to uh, hold this in place. And if you don't know how to solder, it's pretty easy. It, it just takes a little bit of practice, but the idea is pretty simple. We're just going to basically heat up this uh, this wire stuff and melt it into place here. And so in this case, we're heating up our XT60 and melting some wire into there. I'm gonna be pretty generous. And also I have a little fan blowing away the smoke because uh, you don't wanna breathe this. And I'm going to add some new solder to these wires as well. Some fresh, fresh, fresh solder to make sure we get a good connection. Let's actually uh, solder these wires in place here. I'm going to hold this wire far away from the end and sort of melt these two things together here. And this is on the positive side. The, e the connector is labeled, so you want to make sure you have it on the positive side. Okay, this is a very important step that I step that I always forget, which is to slide our uh, heat shrink tubing on. And again, we just let's check, make sure we got okay. Ow, that's hot. That's hot. The connector is very hot, so be careful about that. Slide our heat shrink tubing on, and it will pretty much just shrink itself because it's so warm. There we go. Now, do keep in mind you don't want to get the connectors so hot that it actually melts and the uh, and the, the, the actual gold plated copper connectors uh, actually start to pull out of the connector you don't want that to happen so just keep that in mind 
Okay, now let's go ahead and tin our uh, terminals on our, uh, our all-in-one board here. And tinning just means we're going to add solder. So that's really all there is to it. It's a little awkward working around the frame, but at least since it's in the frame here, it's going to be a nice solid uh, sort of mount for it. So I'm going to add some solder to these uh, pads. I'm going to heat up the pads and add some solder. So we have the negative on the left and the positive on the right. So we want to make sure that we do not get them mixed up. There we go. So we have this connected now. And what we'll end up doing at some point is adding some strain relief so that if this gets pulled, like from the battery or whatever, it won't actually pull on the flight controller board. It'll uh, we'll probably zip tie it to like this mount or something, something like that. I guess it is, maybe it is a little weird how I mounted it like coming straight up, but that just seems to make sense given the, the way that the pads are. So that's what we have. And uh, it did just occur to me that, oh, Oh, that's okay, it doesn't really matter. Okay, so it did just occur to me, I feel a little silly, but this connector actually won't fit through any of these holes in the top plate, which is okay, that's fine, because we can just have it coming out the side. That's really no problem. Um, and then what we'll do probably is, we'll probably have to zip tie this. And we might zip tie it, we could zip tie it to here possibly, if we can get around the, uh, if we can get around the duct or possibly just zip tie it to the top plate not ideal, but we could do that. All right, now it's time to wire up our motors, to solder our motors to our board. Now, with this particular board, like I said, this is kind of a, a you know weird board. Um, it's not like a, a, a normal 20 by 20 or 30 by 30 stack. So we have the motor uh, solder points on the corners, and that's kind of, it's gonna be a little weird, but we have this diagram right here, and this is showing where the motors attached to and also where everything else attaches to which is what we're going to be using for this build and <clears throat> it shows we have motors one and two and three and four and that is that's kind of that's called like motor mapping that's where the that's where this flight controller ESC board thinks that those motors are going to be and where those are going to be positioned and so basically in order to not have to remap them because you, you can do it in Betaflight, but it's kind of a pain. In order to not remap them, I'm just going to make sure that I put my front right motor at the motor to connection, and and you know my my rear right motor at the motor one connection. So for us, <clears throat> because our board is is kind of tilted a little bit, it's going to look like uh, this motor is going to go to this connection right here. This motor is going to go, this bottom right motor or back right motor is going to go to this connection, which is you know much closer. And then our left, left rear motor is going to go to this connection right next to the USB port. And our front left is going to go to this one at the very front of the board. So it's a, you know, it's a little weird, not super symmetrical. Um, that doesn't really bug me, uh, and it will save us some time to uh, to not have to try and remap all these things. Now, the first thing is I'll just go ahead and tin, which is to say add solder to all of the motor pads. So I'm going to add some fresh solder to the wires here. Make sure that it's nice and fresh, nice and shiny.
pretty good. That's pretty good. It is quite tedious working with these tiny little pads, and this is kind of a wonky setup, to be honest, but there we go. So all these uh, motors are connected. So what we should do next is uh, get a multimeter and use the uh, continuity function to check and make sure that all of our solder pads are not bridged together. Now, the reason you might be wondering, why don't I trim these motor wires and make it look super awesome and clean? Well, because uh, one reason is I don't care. Second reason is it doesn't really matter. Uh, the third reason is that I do want some room so that I can make sure that these will uh, clear the, uh, the ducts. And then also I might take these off at some point and use them in another build and I will want to have the extra motor wires on there.